Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome back to another Laravel video. Today we're going to be discussing caching with Laravel. So introduction. Laravel provides an API to make caching easier. It allows us to switch the driver in the back end without us having to update our code, which is extremely useful. Laravel supports memcached and Redis right out the box. The default driver is set to file, so when you install Laravel, and I'm talking about Laravel 5.3 here, the, current, the default driver is set to file, and this means that all your cache data is going to be stored as files. So what happens to cached data? Depending on your preference, you can have data stored in files or in a database. The data is stored as key value pairs. You can set a limit to how long data is stored in cache, and the cache can be flushed or cleared at any time. So what are the benefits of caching? Caching provides noticeable performance boosts. This is because less resources are used to retrieve data. There are also less database calls. And ultimately, you have more users receiving data faster and less users querying your database. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have a page that loads a bunch of data from the database. And let's say that database query is extremely complex upon thousands upon thousands of rows of data. Now, ideally, if you have a lot of users, you don't want those users to make that same database call every single time they come to that page. So let's say you have a thousand users hitting a page that's running a really complex query. You don't really want that to be happening a thousand times a minute. That will cost you a lot in performance and it'll be a lot of queries in your database. If you cache the results of that complex query, all the users will be doing is just grabbing that data set from the cache, so the files, and not exactly the database, so your database remains untouched, the users see the data quicker. So things to be aware of. Managing cache data can become tricky. If you have a really large application, you may be storing large amounts of data. So the more data you store in cache, the greater the file size of your project. Just remember that. This could actually affect your hosting costs. So it's something to be aware of. It's something you should be monitoring closely. If you have statistics or reporting data cached, users may not be seeing the latest data. In other words, users will be seeing what we call stale data. Now this actually applies to all cache data because the moment data is stored, it could potentially mean that it is out of date. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have a database full of students and your users view the list of students all the time. Let's say one of the users performs an import that imports a ton of student data. Let's say that is not cached and your users will not be seeing the latest data because you have a time limit, remember, on your data. Only when the cache data is flushed will the users be seeing the latest data. So you just got to make sure that you keep this in the back of your mind and you decide on what's best for your project and what's best for your users in terms of how long you want to store data and how you clear that cached data. So the cache facade. You can use the cache facade to save or retrieve data. So let's take a look at those two commands. You can use cache put or cache get. And for cache put, it means you're storing data. It requires three parameters. Key, which is the key that's going to be used for your cache data. Value, which is actually your the data you want to cache. And time is time in minutes that you want that data to be stored. Cache get. All you require is just the key to pull that data. You will be able to find the data in the default storage path. As of 5.3, it's storage framework cache. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that the facade does. Refer to the Laravel docs. They have, it's quite detailed and it's very useful. So I just want to do a brief overview of memcached. It's quite popular and we use it currently. It's really good. As per the Laravel docs, memcached or redis is recommended for larger applications a benefit is the ability to tag the data you cache now why this is important is because we know that data is stored as key and value pairs so what happens if let's say for example you have a database full of multiple companies and for each company you have data associated for each one what if you just want to clear only a specific company's data from the cache what you need to do 
with memcast you can just add a tag so let's say we had company id as the tag for this data all we have to do is flush the tag and all that data is gone and not own not all the data so it's quite useful it gives that extra layer just for you to manage your cache number three you have to make sure you have installed memcache on your server first if you already have it set up you can just change the cache driver to memcached and you can do this in the env file you also have the option using the following command cache store driver name and then get put etc so why do they have this? It's because it allows you to change your driver on the fly. And you could have a class specific for memcached or a class specific for Redis. So, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope that this has really informed you on how you can get started using caching with Laravel. If you like the video, please hit that like button and remember to subscribe below. Thanks, guys.